not homosexuals. As far as I'm concerned, you can stay in the gutter. Turn around and look at them. Look at them. Raise upon them. They're looking into Hades. They're looking at the homosexuals. Don't look too long. You might catch AIDS. All right. Thank you very much. They don't seek understanding or fairness. What they are seeking are converts. It's the hard, hard sell of the homosexual lifestyle. Most societies have believed and most religions have taught for thousands of years that marriage is a sacred institution between one man and one woman who are over a certain age and not committed to any other relationship. Denying marriage to a person is to devalue that person's right to participate fully in all that life offers. It's essentially not recognising someone as a person. No state has the right to do that. To deny trans people, intersex, lesbian and gay people the right to marry is to deny them recognition as a person. My Nana had a big part in raising me. After my parents split, she'd look after me. She'd make us vegetable soup, the same I'm making tonight. Nana was one of the last people I came out to. She didn't care. To her, I was still her grandkid. Her acceptance of me meant the world. Like many other rainbow people, I honestly prepared myself to be pushed out. Not understood. For many people, our family's love is conditional. It's not uncommon for queer people to never come out because of this. My Nana died on the 26th of December, 2019. Knowing that she loved me for who I was gave me the strength to go through life holding my head high. Almost every queer person accepts that because of who they are, who they love, they will never live life without facing discrimination. But we find pride within our community. We find pride within ourselves. When did you first realise you were queer? I don't think I really realised. I think looking back on it, there were some obvious moments where it was just like, oh, that was very gay. Like when I used to watch iCarly and I used to throth over Sam or... <laughs> yeah, I, I never had guy crushes growing up and I used to fake them because I, was, I felt weird. Like, I'd be in intermediate school and everyone would be like, oh my God, did you see him? Oh, he's so hot. And I'd be like there looking at a girl going, yeah, so hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it can be empowering to come out, but it is also really daunting. And to do it every single day in every single scenario that you're in gets so draining. So I don't think we're, we owe anyone to come out ever. I was scared to tell my parents because I didn't tell my parents for like six months after I came out to my friends. My family accepts anyone. Like I bring home anyone from anywhere and I say, hey, this person just, this is them. And they're like, hi them, I love you, come on. Let's be a big family. I'm grateful to have a family that's so accepting and to now have family that isn't biologically mine that are so accepting. Like, just friends that now I consider family are just like, cool, like, we'll just be family now. I think it's very common for queer people to have to make their own family. It's very uncommon for people to keep their own family after coming out. I know more people that have been shunned out of their family than I have the opposite, you know? More people are pushed away because of their gender, because of their sexual identity, because of whatever they choose to be. It's like they're not the person they were born or what their parents thought they were, therefore they're not valid anymore. It's like the whole, like, when a baby is born, they all say, oh, it doesn't matter whether it's a boy or a girl, we'll love them no matter what. But it, it does, because they have to be a boy or a girl and they have to stay that way forever. 
So acceptance from family is huge. And if you don't get that acceptance, then you need to find a new family because family isn't biological. Have you come out to, I suppose, to, you know, your, the people you grew up with? My immediate family, yes. Some extended family members don't really know. That's because, like, I sort of just felt like all I needed to tell was, like, those close to me and stuff. Not like they're not close to me or anything. It's just, like, I'm still kind of scared. Not well, yeah, I'm scared at what they're like gonna think because they remember me as like this, like, like this young kid, this young boy. So like, I just with my family, they've seen me like grow to be this. Whereas with others, I don't want it to be like a shock. I first realized I was queer. I think one of the most like, so looking back now, now that I actually am. I look back at this time where I was putting on lipstick in the mirror and I would do that all the time because my sister, my older sister, she used to always leave her makeup inside the bathroom and I used to see this red lipstick and I used to put it on in the mirror and I just look at the mirror and be like and stuff like that. I just do that a lot and then if I heard somebody like I would just grab the toilet paper and be like rub it on my face, rub it all off and like it got to the point that every time I had done that because like I couldn't flush it down the toilet because I didn't want to walk out of the bathroom and them to be like what were you doing? You know, so I used to hide the toilet paper underneath the bathroom sink to the point where it was like full of like toilet paper. So when nobody was like, like when I noticed that it was getting back, I went and flushed it all down the toilet. I was like, oh my god, my little secret's gonna admit to like, you know. So my family's religion and how it's shaped me and myself as a queer. Well, see, I went to um, a Catholic Maori boarding school and my family, that was sort of my family's values, being Catholic, you know, going to do that, being like one with God and stuff like that. And like, yeah, I love praying to God and I love doing that. But it's also taught me like that that wasn't something that I'd want to be like. The religion side of it, it really clashed with my inside. Like I really thought, oh, that's a bit weird. Like, should I, can I be a Catholic and can I be transgender? Can I, can I, can I actually transition? Can I be like this? My nan was very like, very much the anchor of our family. And she's like a devout, devout Catholic. And like, I thought that she would be like against it. Not against it because she was always open and stuff. But it's just, if you're so into like being in your religion and stuff, and you know that that's something that's wrong in it. I, I, I assumed that like, oh, that's not going to align with the values of being a good Catholic. So I just sort of, yeah. I, I, I think it was more me that it um, affected me. But I know that others out there, parents use it as a weapon, religion as a weapon. It's used to um, spread hate. It's used to do the opposite of what they're preaching. They don't want their talk by doing that. Because I, cause I know it's not God that's doing this. It's the people that are warping the words and using him and everything to sort of get to us and say that oh no you can't so being queer and being religious is often looked at like it's either one or the other you can't be both and it's sort of like don't tell me what i can be like i'm going to be who i am but also keep my religion you know but not obviously as as strong as another person's but i'm not going to just completely throw it down the drain like, like I said, I still pray and stuff like that. It's because I know, who are they to tell me what I can and can't do? My relationship with God isn't any of their business. You know, they can't tell me. He can tell me himself. When I go, he will tell me whether or not I'm accepted to the table or not. What do you think the future looks like? Mm. I'm optimistic, but if time will tell. I don't really like to dwell on the future, I just like to focus on what I could do now, rather than tomorrow. So, we'll see. Why are you obscuring your identity? Because there are people in my extended family that I rather not know about my bisexual nature. 
talking to them about it, they would just frown upon it and think, hey, no, don't do this. It's not good for your life now and your pretty much afterlife. And it's a more focus on the afterlife itself rather than the current life. It's like my current day-to-day -day life doesn't matter as much as the end goal. The family members who are religious, I felt them getting colder, while the other one was just like, okay, I support you, you do you. And getting support from my father and brother, while my mother is a little bit more of the religious side, if we're gonna talk about love life, we'd rather not and just skip over it. Does it hurt you that you can't tell her about the meaningful relationships in your life? Feels like a missed opportunity rather than hurt. It's something I'd wish to celebrate, like the milestones, celebrate with her and, hey, mom, uh, bring out the wine, let's, you know, talk about it and just discuss life in details, but no. It's more like, hey, how was life on your side? And I'll hear her side, my side, oh, nothing new. How would your family react if you just, you know, you said to them, hey, I'm in love with a man? They, they wouldn't mind meeting him. They wouldn't mind having, you know, like dinner all five of us together. Me, my mom, brother and father and him but there will be tension in the air. It will be like a nightmare for some, while others are just surviving the nightmare and it's like, okay, let's let you know, the elephant in the room exit the room. And once they're exit, we don't have to talk about the elephant in the room if there is no elephant in the room. So they'll just wait until the elephant just makes a hole in the wall and get out and then just fix the wall. As queer people, we accept we just have to accept that we're kind of, we have to hide ourselves to an extent, you know? I just, I really hope it's gonna be different in the future. Yeah. yeah. So what about you? Should we talk about you? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so, great friend and companion to me. Am I? You are. Oh. That You're means... a special person to me. <laughs> You're a very special person to me.